Hi, I'm Nancy Brown. Today, as part of our baking course, we're going to make croissants. After working with many of you already, I know that you represent a wide variety of baking experience. For those of you who have already completed the demonstration and practice session in the classroom, watching this video will help to reinforce your learning. I used to think it must be very difficult to make croissants because it can be very hard to find a good one. This method I'm going to show you today has proven to be quite successful for me. This particular lesson focuses on the classic croissant, but the same basic recipe and methods apply to pen au chocolat and apple turnovers, for example. The website includes cutting instructions and links to short videos demonstrating how these pastries are shaped. Okay, let's get going. For reference, here's our website address if you'd like to make note of it before we begin our demonstration. As I mentioned earlier, the recipe I'm using here can be found on the website. You have five ingredients only. It's a very simple recipe. It has all-purpose flour, granulated sugar, instant yeast, salt, and slightly warm water. And all of these can just be poured into your mixer bowl one at a time in no particular order. Have your mixer set up ahead of time with the dough hook and when you're finished pouring the ingredients into the bowl turn your mixer on at low speed while you're incorporating the ingredients and they come together. When the dough has come together you can speed it up to about speed 4 or 40 percent of your, your maximum speed. The dough hook doesn't want to run too fast because it, it does labor your, your machine if you run it too hard. So you're not going to be looking for a consistency of dough that is like bread. Here you can see it's cleaned the sides of the bowl and it's uniformly mixed. That's what you're looking for there. It's going to be slightly gooey but not overly sticky. You don't want it to be wet. Going back to the consistency, with bread you have worked it until the gluten is fully developed, but here with croissants you're going to work them a great deal with all the rolling out and incorporating the butter. And if you mix it too too long at this stage, it will be overmixed by the time you're, fi you're finished. It'll be overworked. So set this into, uh, make it into a ball, set it onto a floured surface and cover it with a bowl for about half an hour to an hour to rest. Now you're going to prepare the butter to incorporate into the dough. Use unsalted. I have a quarter of a pound here. And I have previously cut a, a section of plastic wrap. And this is going to be used to actually define a six inch square for the butter. So you're going to wrap this around your butter, leaving about a six inch square of plastic f to work the butter into. Make sure your butter is cold. That really is a very important rule here. So throughout the entire process, your butter will be cold. As it warms up, it's going to get very soft and it will tend to leak out of uh, your dough and you don't want that. You want to keep all this good butter inside your croissant. That's what's going to make it nice and fluffy and flaky. So if you do this, this butter preparation into the plastic ahead of time, pop it into the fridge until you're ready to use it. Work it into the edges, into the corners of your plastic. And now you're ready to work that into your dough. This is going to be the very beginning of your laminating process. Lamination of the dough is when you layer the butter and the dough together, giving you a very light flaky dough. So we're assuming that uh, uh, about an hour has passed here and I have let the dough relax so that it won't be too difficult for me to work with. The gluten is now relaxed and soft. If you try to work it too early it will spring back and it will be very frustrating for you so try not to get too impatient and don't miss these relaxing steps. They are quite important. So you see I just smoothed the dough into uh, a rectangle with my hands before I started using the rolling pin just makes it a bit easier if you've already defined the shape that you're going to go shaping into. And you see how I've popped some bubbles there? The yeast is growing actively and that's terrific but you don't want those bubbles to get any larger. You want uniformly small 
uh, little pockets of air throughout the entire dough. Unwrap your previously prepared butter, set it in the center of the rectangle, and then close the dough up around it. Make sure it's nicely snug in there so that it can't be pushed out when you start your rolling process. A bit of flour. Don't douse it at this stage. It's going to be too difficult if you use too much flour because it'll be like pushing something on ball bearings and it will just work away from you, roll away from you and it'll be very frustrating for you. So this process will take a little while. Um, I have cut this back a little bit time-wise so that uh, you don't have to see the entire process but you're going to work it into a 36 inch strip that's about 8 inches wide. Be patient but work as quickly as you can again for the purpose of keeping the butter cold. Again get rid of any little um, bubbles that you see on the surface. Pop them so that they don't come back to haunt you later. Now at any stage in the process once you have uh, uh, got a point to a point where you can put these in the fridge feel free to do so and then start again the next day. This process that this first step here is the first double turn. You turn your edges into the center and then fold again and you've got your first double turn complete. You're going to put that in the fridge see how you got your seams on the side there and let it rest for about an hour. Now I've pulled it back out of the fridge run your seams north to south and that way you'll be rolling the dough in the opposite direction to the direction you rolled it in previously. Now we're going to cut this step a little bit short for you to see because it's exactly the same as before. We're going to create another 36 inch long strip again about 8 inches wide and you're going to do another double turn. And you see I've just let the dough hang over the edge of the table there and that lets gravity work for you. It, it pulls some weight down and it also lets you work close to you rather than trying to, to work um, too far in front of you. Do be careful that you don't lose it, that it doesn't slide onto the floor. That has happened <laughs> to yours truly. So now you're going to put this into another double fold just like before, ends into the center and then fold again. Now you have two double folds or you could also call them turns. You have two double turns done. Put that into the fridge for another hour, let it rest. Now you see I've pulled it back out again and I'm starting to work on it again and this is the last turn. This time you're going to use uh, a shorter piece of dough. You're going to roll it out to about 30 inches and instead of a double turn you're going to do a single turn. Again, any little uh, bubbles, pop them. I see when I'm rolling, I am rolling with the pressure away from me. Into three this time. Fold it into three and you're good to go. Okay. So now I've put that into the fridge for another hour to relax or it could be put in overnight just as easily and well wrapped so that the air can't get at the dough and, and create a skin on the surface. So now this step we're actually creating the, the rectangle that we're going to use to cut out the dough. We're going to actually shape these now and we're going for a rectangle that's about 20 inches by 12 inches. So there we go, we've got our rectangle ready to go. And you can use a knife or a pizza cutter. I tend to like a pizza cutter, I like the way it works for me, but you use whatever you feel comfortable with. The first cut is a vertical line down the center. <clears throat> and then what I'm doing here is I'm marking the edges so that I can draw two horizontal lines that will cut that rectangle into three horizontal strips so that I will end up with six equal rectangles. Then you do diagonal cuts from corner to corner and you will end up with 12 
pieces of dough. And from here you're going to shape your croissants. A nick in the top, stretch it a little bit, stretch it end to end. Be gentle because it will snap and if it does then just patch it back together and use it because you, you certainly don't want to get rid of it. It's very expensive and it's involved a lot of work at this point. Roll it towards you and then I give a 180 degree turn and pinch the ends together. Now that's just a preference of style on my part. Some people don't pinch them together. They just leave them straight out and you do whatever it is that creates a style that you like aesthetically. It's totally up to you. So holding the end with one hand, roll it towards you with the other. Make sure the tip is underneath so it doesn't open up during baking. Pinch together and you're done. So now you'll get a, a, a baking sheet, cover it with parchment paper, and each sheet will, uh, um, will fit six croissants. So you'll need two baking sheets because you have made 12 croissants. I have let these rise so that they're about doubled in size. I've covered them with, uh, in this case I used another, another pan. I just inverted another pan over it to keep the air off it and I set it into a uh, place out of drafts, not hot but not cold. And I'm making an egg wash here. I broke one egg into the bowl and put about a tablespoon of water in. You could use milk or you could use cream. And then with a uh, whisk, just whisk it together till it's all smooth. With a pastry brush, just apply it to the exterior, cover it all up. Be very gentle at this point because the croissants are at their most fragile state here. They're fully risen and they could be easily deflated. Don't use too much of the egg wash because egg wash does not only create a shine on the finished product but it does make them darker and it could fool you into thinking they're done. Here's a shot before they're done. You'll see there's some white lines on them. They've been baked at 375 degrees at 20, for 20 minutes at that point. This shot, I have put them in for another 5 minutes and they're more equally brown all over. Let them sit there for about 5 minutes after they come out of the oven and then put them on the rack to cool. And voila! Your finished product. Bon appétit and congratulations.